It's Thursday, April 4, and time for your Bobby This Today morning news update. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. The National Union of Public Workers remains united. The declaration from the union's re-elected president, Kenny McDowell, moments after brushing aside three other challenges to reclaim the post in yesterday's election. The 38-year-old health planner was announced the winner about 10 minutes to 9 last night, accumulating 354 votes to retain the union's presidency, which he has held since 2015. His nearest challenger, former first vice president Fabian Jones, won 292 votes, while Verrill Scott and Joanne Innes totaled 237 and 193 votes, respectively. Speaking to the media following the win, McDowell assured that the NUPW was not broken. What I would like to send out there as a message is that the union is together. The union is together. Even though we might have our differences, even though some things might have been said during the election, it does not mean that the union is divided. The union is together. Um, all of us will come together at the end of this, at the end of this exercise, after the, tonight into tomorrow, and make sure that we put together all of our policies, all of our ideas, all of our programs to make sure that the union does its best. McDowell says his first priority as re-elected president is to fight for those long-standing workers who are still awaiting to be appointed. The first thing we have to do is to ensure that those officers who have not been appointed as yet are now appointed. We also have to make sure that um, we put those priorities as dictated to us by the membership as number one, two and three. Some of those priorities can be um, further salary negotiations. We can look at um, having a medical service here at the union. We're also going to look at developing an NUPW app. So there are big things in place for the trade union movement, especially NUPW going forward. Um, but it is going to take a team effort. And I am sure that everyone here tonight is willing to work together to ensure that we achieve our goals. McDowell's entire team was not successful in their bids to win seats, while Kim Webster was voted in as first vice president and Charles Bostick was the overwhelming favorite for second vice president. Dion Brown Finley and Michelle Edgel lost their bids to become third vice president and deputy general treasurer, respectively. Kimberly Agard is the new third vice president, while Roy Greenwich was elected as deputy general treasurer. Pamela Humphrey was elected general treasurer. The Barbados National Oil Company Limited and the Barbados National Terminal Company Limited raked in the majority of profits of state-owned enterprises based on financials for over 50 entities as at December 31, 2018. Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strawn, revealed in a ministerial statement in Parliament last night that the two entities posted profits of $71.17 million for the period. There were five top profit earners within the group, Barbados National Oil Company Limited and Barbados National Terminal Companies Limited Consolidated, Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, <laughs> Barbados, sorry, Barbados Agriculture Management Company Limited, National, <laughs> National Petroleum Corporation, and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, which reported profits totaling $77.17 million, $44.12 million, $34.69 million, $19.18 million, and $14.03 million, respectively. However, without <laughs> including government grants and the write-off, only two of these five state-owned enterprises would have recorded their profit, namely the Barbados National Oil Company Limited, 2.14 million, and the BAMC, sir, 1.13 million dollars. Conversely, there were some significant loss makers, namely the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., the Transport Board, and Caribbean Aircraft Handling Company Limited, with reported net losses of $7.69 million, $7.12 million, and $5.25 million, respectively. 
One of Barbados's main egg producers wants clarification on the ban of single-use plastics. General Manager of Chickmong Egg Division, Trevor Gunsby, says he's concerned that government indicated that egg trees would be affected by the ban. He says he will be seeking a meeting with the Ministry tree of maritime affairs and the blue economy on the matter. He says the company switched from plastic trees to recyclable material over 13 years ago. I would like to have the opportunity to make a presentation to make them aware of the product that I am using to pack my eggs, which is made from a recyclable material, which is not what you could consider plastic. At the same time, the general manager says the recently introduced garbage and sewage contribution tax will take a toll on the business. First of all, the, the water rates are doubled. In the meantime, you will, you will have to pass it on to the customer. You will have to pass it on to the customer. But it depends. I mean, I'll be frank. Based on the rates, when you consider rates, it's not a big increase. It may be a fraction of a cent. If it's a quarter cent, you can't pass it on. We'll have to absorb it. I mean, if it's three quarter cent, we'll pass it on to a cent. You got to go to the closest decimal point, right? I mean, if you got something that, that you, have, you have a price increase of a quarter cent, you don't pass it on. You got to absorb it. You got to become a little more efficient. In order for Barbados to restructure and rebuild the economy, it must look at ways to tap into foreign exchange. And one of the ways that Agriculture Minister Indawe believes that can happen is through the island's rum industry. He made the comments last evening as Mount Gay Rum Distilleries announced its first female master blender, Trudian Grosner. We have uh, the finest sugar crystals anywhere in the world, but do we tell that story? No, we don't. And as Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, I, I certainly intend to tell that story to the world. And then we have and can create the finest molasses, which is one of the inputs that you get going into Rome. And I've said that we as a destination and we as a country, in order for us to restructure and rebuild our economy, what we have to do now is look at ways to earn foreign currency through what we already have that we do well. And if it is one thing we do well is produce rum. And we don't only drink it well, we also produce it. And the time has come when we must show that rum can give us that place, that competitive edge in a global environment where we need to differentiate Barbados and earn foreign currency. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from the region, the Caribbean remains a major transshipment point for cocaine and marijuana destined for North America and Europe. That's according to the latest International Narcotics Control Strategy Report by the U.S. Department of State. We get more of that report from HTS News Force. The report states that the geographic and jurisdictional diversity of the region represent major challenges to combating the illegal drug trade, adding that these countries do not have sufficient maritime resources to effectively patrol their entire coastlines. It says while traffickers use a variety of vessels such as yachts and cargo ships to transport illicit drugs, go-fast boats are still popular, which enable traffickers to avoid capture by accessing multiple territorial waters. According to the report, all OECS countries have strong working relationships with the United States on drug control operations. 
It added that St. Kitts and Nevis has increased the size of its police force and opened a new forensic laboratory, while St. Lucia appointed a new drug squad commander in October 2018. In terms of drug supply reduction, the report states that during the first nine months of 2018, drug seizures in the Eastern Caribbean totaled 661 kilograms of cocaine and 9 metric tons of marijuana, according to data received from each country. And finally, British MPs vote by a majority of one to force the Prime Minister to ask for an extension to the Brexit process in a bid to avoid any no-deal scenario. The Commons passed the bill put forward by Labour's Yvette Cooper. However, it first needs to be approved by the Lords before it becomes law. The EU will also need to decide whether to grant any extension. The vote comes on the heels of Brexit talks between Prime Minister Theresa May and opposition Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.populistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good morning. Thank you.